All right, today we're going to talk a bit about the uh, evolution of the vertebrates. Uh, this video will focus on the origin of vertebrates through uh, the fish. So, let's see. Um, now, when we last talked, we talked about a lot of the invertebrates. We didn't talk about all of them. Uh, and the last group that I want to mention of invertebrates are the echinoderms, like the starfish. The echinoderms are the sister group to chordates, the group that we are in, chordata, or the chordates. So the nearest relative are the starfish. Starfish actually lost their brain through the process of evolution um, and take on a, uh, a kind of an odd lifestyle. But I want you to be familiar with the closest relative of chordates. But uh, within the chordates, the fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, all those critters you often think of when you think of animals are present. Here is a cladogram of chordates. And uh, I really like the fact that they have the clades within the chordates mentioned. So chordates are everybody. Here's a starfish up here, the echinodermata. Uh, chordates start, the most basal chordate is this one right here, which we're going to learn by a more common name called a lancelet. Um, so these are the lancelets here. Uh, this is another group that's in the chordata, although it's really weird. Uh, it loses most of its chordate features as an adult, the Eurochordata. Uh, we're going to talk about m not every one of these, but several of these groups, okay? But everyone on here except the out group is a chordate. Then we have the evolution down here of the craniates, then the vertebrates, the nathostomes, the lobe-finned fish, the tetrapods, and the amniotes. So that's how this chapter is divided. Um, and we're going to talk about these uh, major clades. They're kind of important, so we'll uh, we'll learn those as we go. So, first of all, chordata. What is it? Well, we are a group that have a dorsal hollow nerve cord, and what that does is it develops into the brain and spinal cord. Um, in uh, in in various groups. But we have a nerve cord that runs the uh, runs in the dorsal surface rather than the ventral, like we saw in the earthworm. If you look for the ventral nerve cord, this runs on the dorsal surface. We also have a notochord, at least we do during some point in our development. What I want to say here is these are the derived traits of chordates. And not all of us have all of these traits as adults, but we have them at some point in our development. So a notochord is a flexible rod that provides skeletal support. We lose it and, and replace it with vertebrae, but we have it as uh, embryos. We also have pharyngeal slits. These are openings to the outside uh, world that allow for water passage. Uh, they're found in the embryos of all chordates. Um, in humans, they often develop into parts of the ear and neck, or in, in a lot of tetrapods they do. In fish, they'll develop into things like gills. We also all have at some point a post-anal tail. Okay, so we can see a diagram of this on the next page. Um, you see the uh, dor dorsal hollow nerve cord, the notochord, the pharyngeal slits, and the post-anal tail. So to point out um, what is going on here, um, let me just show you. I'll try to fit this on the screen. Um, let me let me get this. Let me get to get this figured out here. Trying to get my pen to work here. All right, so get the pen on. All right, so if we draw one of these, you should be able to draw one of these. I'm going to draw a real crude one since I'm using a tablet. All right, um, we have the pharyngeal slits. You can label them yourself. I'm not going to draw all the words here. We have those slits up here. You can see it's got a complete digestive tract, so mouth and anus. And notice that, so the anus is here, right? Anus is there. And the tail, so there's the anus. The tail goes beyond the anus. That is what they mean by post-anal tail, muscular post-anal tail. That tail goes beyond the anus. Think of an earthworm. It has kind of a tail, right? But the, the anus is in the end of the tail. Uh, we have, our groups have a post-anal tail. Now, we had this as uh, embryos. We all had a tail. Um, we still have a tailbone. Uh, but at some point in our development, we had that. There's the notochord. The notochord runs here. It's kind of a flexible rod that provides support. And then above that is the dorsal hollow nerve cord. 
uh, that is going to uh, develop into the brain and and uh, spinal cord in in groups like us, right? So these are the major parts of all chordates. This is what unites us together and therefore very important for an exam. So you might just try drawing that chordate uh, a couple times, okay? All right, so non-vertebrate chordates. Let's start at the very bottom of the chordate tree, the lancelets. Uh, this group uh, doesn't look like much. They, they're buried in the ocean usually with their head sticking out. Um, they resemble what we think of as kind of the most basic chordate. Basically, all they really have are those major chordate features. Um, and they, their fossils go way back in time to the uh, Paleozoic there. If we look at what they have, you know, here's their bodies. But notice highlighted here, they have a postanal tail. They have a dorsal hollow nerve cord. They have a notochord. They have pharyngeal slits. They have all the things we would expect to see. I'm going to skip over urochordata for today, but just know that when they're embryos, they have urochordata. When they're embryos, they have chordate features, but as adults, they, they, they lose most of those features. Um, the next group I want to mention is the first member of the clade of craniates. Craniates means organisms with a skull. So this uh, is a hagfish. It has a cartilaginous skull, so a skull of cartilage. It does not have jaws. And it does not have vertebrae, so it's not a vertebrate yet. We haven't found any vertebrates here yet, but we have skull, and uh, and it's made of cartilage, and there's no jaw. That's also important to note. Jaws have not evolved yet when this group split off. And one really cool feature about hagfish is when you handle them, their defense mechanism is to produce copious amounts of mucus. Awesome. Then we have the evolution of the vertebrates. So we actually have a... Uh, a uh, vertebrae encasing that spinal cord and a skull develop. Okay, so now we have skulls and we have spinal cords in all the rest of the groups we'll mention. And the first group of true vertebrates then are uh, jawless fish, like this lamprey. Um, they still don't have jaws, but they do have a skull, a cartilaginous skeleton, uh, and they have vertebrae. They still don't have jaw. They have a mouth of like that's like a suction cup with teeth on it, but they don't have jaws yet. So the jawless fish, the oldest living lineage of vertebrates. There they are. These often act as parasites uh, in the lakes uh, and attach to fish and uh, drink their body fluids. We then have the evolution of jaws, and this is a group known as the nathostomes. Uh, we are included in this group, by the way, um, because uh, we have jaws, right? So if you um, want to remember the name of, of the clade, you can bear with me a moment. I'm having trouble here. Uh, the, these are going to be the uh, nathostomes. Or uh, the first evolution of the jaw. They uh, so the first group, the basal group of nathostomes, uh, are the sharks and the rays. Um, they have vertebrae. They have a lateral line system that helps to, them to, to stay oriented correctly, and 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 it's actually a sense organ that helps them sense movement in the water and things and electrical signals. Um, this group interestingly has internal fertilization, but as you probably know, their skeletons are entirely cartilaginous. Um, although their, their skulls are more bony and they have teeth. Here's an example of an ancient fossil uh, uh, relative. Uh, this is, uh, uh, oh, if my son were here, my son has this one memorized. Uh, I'll probably think of it as soon as I move the slide. Um, Dunkelosteus, that's his name, Dunkelosteus. A really cool fish fossil. It actually had uh, armored plates on the outside. This is not the skull. These are the armored plates on the outside of the head. All right, so we have the next group that evolves, which is uh, the um, the Osteichthys, the next clade. Okay, Osteichthys. You are in the Osteichthys. We are fish, basically. We are ray fin, or I mean, not ray fin fish, but we are fish. Osteichthys. Within the Osteichthys, there's a group called the ray fin fish. These are the most common kinds of fish. Um, they're called ray fin fish because if you look at one of their fins. Um, their fins, you know, might look something like this. There's a fin, you know, the body of the fish is up here. 
And there's tons of little bones in that fin. Kind of like the rays of the sun when you draw a picture. Those are the ray finned fish. Okay. Think of bass, bluegill, crappie. All those are ray finned fish. They evolved um, about 400 million years ago, about the same time as the sharks. Uh, they have a, a relatively speaking, heavy skeleton made of bone. They have a swim bladder that uh, fills full of gas that allows them to, to stay buoyant in the water. Um, this, very importantly, very important, important factoid here, this is the most species-rich vertebrate group, meaning out of the vertebrates. Now, the most species-rich group of, of critters are the beetles, basically, the insects. Uh, so, so if you want to put that in perspective of phylum, the arthropods. But the most uh, rich vertebrate group um, are the ray fin fish. And this is the group most people think of when they say fish, right? So here's one kind of opened up for you. you. They have the swim bladder, which is a really important organ for maintaining buoyancy. Um, if you go deep sea fishing and you pull up a fish and you have to throw it back, you often stab the fish with like a, 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 a needle to pop that swim bladder because it won't be able to get back down to the depths when you throw it back if you don't because it'll just lay on the surface because that swim bladder expands as you reel the fish up. But they have a swim bladder, they have gills, they have all the parts you might expect to see. And they also have that lateral line system like we saw in the sharks. But the next group of fish I want to mention is the group that we are most related to. And that, uh, those are the lobe-finned fish. Um, these uh, gave rise to the tetrapods. Tetrapods are land animals with four limbs. Okay. This group gave rise to the te tetrapods, and we are technically in the clade of the lobe fin fish. So we, the, so lobe fin fish are, are a clade that are within the bony fish, the Osteichthys. Okay, we are in that clade. We are lobe fin fish. How do we know? Because we have the same bones in our hands as they have in their fins. So we have homologous structures with them. There are only a few living species, some lungfish, for example, and this example, I love this fish. This is the coelacanth. We thought it was extinct since the Paleozoic, and then, uh, then, then we started finding them off the coast of Madagascar and other places. The people who lived there knew it weren't, wasn't extinct, but scientists didn't know until like the 1930s. And so uh, there's an example of one. So just to show you, a ray fin fish, there's an example of their fins. And here's a lobe fin fish. Lobe fin fish have a shoulder girdle. They have uh, bones just like your wrist and hand and phalanges. They have those same basic bones that evolved into the tetrapod hand and foot, um, making us their cousins, basically. So those are um, the fish and lower vertebrates. In the next video, we will pick up from there and look at amphibians um, and reptiles.